Well, like I was saying, shit happens. I'm sitting here being called a racist every day by people trying to make me act like a racist. So when some shit go down, all they can do is play my racist video clips and say, look, see, I told you he was a racist. That's bullshit. You need to look at other people talk about the situation. Ross. Thank you, Dave. Well, it's 16 minutes after 8, and Reverend Jesse Jackson is in town. And at noon today, he'll lead the Rainbow Push Coalition in a rally at the San Francisco Federal Reserve Bank on Market Street to fight back to save our homes. Nice to have you here this morning. This He's there to talk morning. about homes. Can't retire. Well, I'm, I'm at least going to be here for the next four or five minutes. Indeed. Uh -huh. Indeed. Well, let me first of all uh, ask you about this comment uh, President Carter made that the much of the anger of President Obama is racism. Do you agree? Well, it certainly is ugly. President Carter was speaking from his own experience about people use code words uh, for some conservative means a set of religious values. For some it means fiscal austerity. For others it means anti-civil rights. And when you begin to hear names like calling the president an animal and go back to Africa and should have been there with the president with the uh, Senator Kennedy. Uh, these words are, are ugly and they're dangerous and they're divisive. But I think the reason the president has played it down is because the more we discuss the issue of, of racism, the less we discuss the issue of comprehensive health care for all Americans, the less we discuss the impact of losing eight and a half million jobs the last 18 months of the crisis of four and a half million homes and foreclosures. There's a struggle to not allow this uh, strain of ugliness to take our attention away from that which really matters. I, I think of all the, the vile hatred that you mentioned earlier there, um, most people would agree is probably racism. But what we're hearing, though, is a suggestion that when Joe Wilson, as inappropriate as it was, yelled, you lie, was racism. Do you believe that Congressman you Joe Wilson was racist. See, the reason I, I don't want to be pinned on that is that his feelings are irrelevant to the bigger issue. I mean, here we are, you know, shall we spend this time discussing one obscure congressman's point of view in South Carolina who, ha who embraces a lot of mean stuff, it seems? Or shall we discuss the fact that I was in Antioch last night, man, and whole communities are sinking. Uh, when they need to restructure loans and not repossess the home, people are hurt, losing your house, your job, and the student loan debt, and the, on the health care price. And we're discussing uh, a guy or uh, some people's feelings that, uh, and, and, and since they think about the race thing, when we take on a guy, uh, the, the lawsuits have shown that people who are black and brown were targeted, still and clustered into subprime loans by race. Uh, people of color have uh, a uh, high infant mortality rate and short of life expectancy. The disparity in education and in, in health care and the access to capital. So it's fairly obvious that we have these patterns of race. Now we need to make sure the Department of Justice and EEOC and contract compliance address them. Well, okay, but, 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 but to make a running and make this guy a hero. I mean, I'm not interested in, in making a YouTube spot for this guy to raise more money. Exactly. Okay, let me, let me do it this way then, then I'll stop talking about it. We just don't want to see every time somebody criticizes the president or the president disagrees with Congress, it's called racist. There were, there were Democrats who stayed in their seats and uh, were, could have been uh, uh, construed as uh, disrespectful. I really, I, I really yeah. don't think that's what caught. Caught him saying that is a concatenation of things. And that is the guy saying, you lie. That is that you are a monkey. That is to go back to Africa. That is you are not born in America. You are not legitimate. That's this whole string of, of personal attacks. The guys coming to a presidential rally with semi-automatic weapons. I mean, this is this is this is not about public policy. This is something. It's like, it's like trying to replay the election that they lost last November. This is different than the right to agree to disagree. And and I think that that's fair game. You know, the disagree about the health care policy. Yeah, can. All right, I, I want to. I have to touch on what you're doing today. Uh, Twenty-three percent of the nation's homes, you say, are facing foreclosure. Well, here we are, four and a half million homes in foreclosure, twenty million on the water. One of every three Americans today is behind in their mortgage. Next should be one in two. So while we are bailing out the banks with a kind of economic transfusion, the hemorrhaging. It's out distancing the modifications. The, the, so we're going to march today at high noon the Federal Reserve because we want rates down, restructure loans, don't repossess homes. People have done all the right things. People have played by the rules. 
uh, they have a, often two two parent working in, in the household, all the rules, and yet, and here you you lose this because we do not address a, a trade policy issue, uh, losing these jobs, manufacturing jobs, losing houses, and our youth a hundred uh, a billion a year in student loan debt. I mean, we've shifted from grants to loans and from investment to commodities, and so you trapped with a hundred thousand dollar student loan debt and lost job and home foreclosure, that is a depression. And, well, and, and the government has bailed out, in some sense, the banks who got the windfall from the stimulus. It was, de it was designed to reinvest in America. It did not happen. And I think the important p uh, point you made this morning is we can't let all the uh, these little wedge issues, these side issues, get in the way of the big problems well, we have in this well, country. Well, that, that, that's the kind of design that you know, take our eyes off the prize. And we do it all the time. And we We're going to be at the San Francisco Federal Reserve Bank, uh, 101 Market Street, Noon today. Yeah, not a club at Reverend uh, uh, Brown's Church, uh, Third Baptist. Uh, you're Reverend doing that earlier. Uh, a, a minister's leadership night. breakfast and leadership leadership breakfast. But now we must begin to fight back to reduce student loans. If banks can get zero percent money, why can't students get zero percent money? So to save our, our houses, reduce the rate of student loans, and to stop the uh, the hemorrhaging of our jobs. Nice to have you here this morning. Good to see you, sir. All right, thank you. Time now is uh, twenty-two after eight. No. There's people who want to waste their time trying to pull me out, out of the closet. I'm supposed to be this super racist, and they want to pull me out so I can just get all racist on people. It's not going to happen. There's bigger problems than worrying about the real AIX being racist. And if I was racist, what's the difference between me and you? Apparently you're racist. If you try so hard to prove that one person is racist or corrupt, that just shows your own corrupt racism. Because shit, like I said, I've been helping white people my entire life. Is it because that's the way the massa won't need to be? Or it's because I don't see nobody else helping them? Why is that? Now, I'm going to tell you something. I remember helping somebody black and I lost a job. Helping black people has always hurt me. Every time. So, is it the black person or is it the white people? The problem lies inside each and every one of us. We are the fucking problem. Because you can't respect me because you're supposed to be better than me. You've been taught your whole entire life that you are better than any nigger or Mexican or Chinese. Oh, you're better than black, yellow, and brown. That's what you've been taught. And when reality kicked in, you're no better than black, yellow, and brown. But society don't see it like that. Mainly, your people in society don't see it like that. They don't see shit. White people have had the blinders on longer than black people, longer than anybody else. Stop fucking yourselves worried about me fucking you or taking something from you. Stop worrying about other people other than white people. You can't blame a black man for all y'all problems. And if that's the case, why in the fuck did you need the black man so much that you had to capture and kidnap him to bring him over here? You wanted him so much to be a part of your world that now you don't want him in your world. You fail to realize one thing about your world. America ain't shit. I'm going to tell you why. In all the years that America has been, we just now got an African American president. What about a Native American president? What about the people running this motherfucker that came from this motherfucker? What about that? You don't hear nobody talking about that? Please. When it comes to real AIX being real racist, I'm only as racist as the comments that are forced out of my mouth. 